live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering HP Discover 2015, brought to you by HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here back live in Las Vegas for HP Discover 2015. This is Silicon Angle and Wikibon's theCUBE, our flagship program. We'll go out to the event and extract the signal noise. We're kind of winding down day one. I'm, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Our next guest is J Jason Newton, back again to talk about the enterprise group messaging. We kind of had to hold it back at the beginning of the day when you were on, well, the, the, not to spill the marbles in the lobby yeah. with Megan Whitman's keynote. Welcome back. It really is the new Hewlett Packard enterprise messaging. It's not just enterprise group anymore. So, yeah, we're kind of holding back. I didn't want to spill all the beans, but um, I wanted her and the executive team to kind of come out and tell the new story. I'll just say that after the show, there were a lot of high fives in the in the green room. Um, you know, one company where we actually came out there, like one company. We told the best story that we could possibly tell that you know it's it's about time that we get there. So they're super thrilled with um, you know what we're able to do today, and uh, you know I think um, we started we put a different a different face out there for our customers um, to believe in and start to get a, uh, an idea of what we're going to be all about and how we're going to enable our customers and our partners to be successful. And new logo, new logo unveiled a new logo. Yep, Very explain simple. the new logo. Yep, crisp. Yep. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it's um, you know, it's, it's sort of symbolic uh, of a couple of things. Um, you know, one of the things I like about the new logo is is the the color palette, the color green. If you look at our industry, color today, of money, baby, the color of money, color <laughs> of growth, right? Color of opportunity. Um, but also, um, if you look at the landscape, for whatever reason, like everything in tech is blue, right? Yeah. Um, a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow here, but like green is was sort of out there, so really enables us to stand out. Simplicity is what we want to be about for customers. Um, simplicity of experience, simple to do business with. So, you know, uh, the rectangle um, is part simplicity, but also represents a window, window of opportunity for our customers. And as we all know, and we've talked about earlier this morning, windows of opportunity are fleeting in time. And so we've got to act. And that that idea, you know, being able to act on that idea within that window of opportunity um, is what we want to stand for, enable our customers to, to do. So you guys gave a lot of thought to this. And you had some really smart people sort of dancing around. I'm sure you sort of had a bat, back, back and forth on a lot of this stuff. And what came out of it is the idea economy. And everybody talks about the digital economy. We love the digital economy, we yeah. talk about it all the time. But ideas are the mainspring of the digital economy. Well, yeah, they call it the okay. digital economy. The, you know, Cisco talks about application economy, and there's all these different sort of API words. API economy. Yeah, I kind of, API, but you know, I think you're really talking about the bits and pieces. I think the power that's driving and fueling all that is, is ultimately the idea. So um, digital, all those things are kind of expressing different angles of, of the broader what we believe is ultimately the idea economy. Now, when we were talking back and forth about is that the right, you know, sort of way to frame what's going on in this world, some people push back and say, well, you know, the world's always been driven by ideas. That's not a big deal. That's not a, a new thought. Um, true, but I, th I think what we're saying here is that the idea economy that we're living in today, uh, what the difference is, anybody can act on an idea. You don't, there's not these huge barriers to getting capital, um, to uh, harnessing, um, uh, technology or yeah. bring people together to take an idea and create something special. And Meg gave some great examples today of, you know, um, it's almost becoming an adjective, the Uber Uber of your industry. You know, don't get Uberfied in your industry, right? The, these people that had a great idea to create a new experience, they never bought a single car, right? And now they're in, yeah. you know, what is it, 51 countries and 300 million I mean, passengers? Everything, everything, and, everything comes down to a, a generational shift we talked about earlier yeah. about enabling technology the mobile fabric and web-based cloud stuff helped them to get an app out there, and then they had no assets and created <laughs> massive wealth. Well, and, and, and I think what's fascinating is the real story about Uber is not Uber, it's about the taxi industry's lack of ability to respond. They were ready for disruption. I didn't realize, I didn't realize that Uber started in 2009, so yeah, they had right. six years and, to not get disrupted. And and they're still sort of protecting the, the past from the future, or trying to. Well, they're still running, I, I drove in a cab here from the airport, they still have CBs. Right. Right? I mean, that's their scheduling system as a CB radio? Man. Yeah. We, a little trivia, we took an Uber in Barcelona at HP Discover, yeah. and it was actually banned in Barcelona, they were so hated, but again, that's the, that's the, the, that's the, the power corner. of execution, so of an idea. You're going to compete with it, you have to have an infrastructure to be able to, just to, to fend off entrance into your industry like that, right? But so the interesting thing about that, the Uber example, Airbnb, there are others, that, that, that these are ideas, yes. getting, getting put into action, that are able to be put into action now, because there's this,
infrastructure that's, you know, we call it a digital fabric or whatever you call it. It's got cloud, it's got security, yes. it's got a data layer. Yes. And you layer, put software on top of that, you combine social networking, mobile, and boom, you're disrupted in an industry. Right. Now, a lot of your customers aren't, you know, they're, they're big companies. <laughs> so, perhaps the greater challenge for them is trying to figure out not who's disrupting me, but who can I disrupt or what new opportunities can I go after? That, that's, a, that's exactly what we want to enable and that's what we want to enable our partners to help our customers do. Um, you know, look, <laughs> we work with some really smart companies. The big traditional companies aren't all the taxi cab industry, right? That's not at all <laughs> what we're saying, okay? Um, you know, one of our, our great clients, you know, United, you look at what they're doing. Um, they're constantly thinking about how they can be a disruptor in their industry, whether it be from, um, you know, applying um, you know, Internet of Things and big data technology to the cockpit or to, you know, um, uh, to maintenance and of their, of their airplanes, to um, driving new revenue streams through entertainment systems, um, new experiences for check-in. Um, I mean, they're really, you know, a great example of a company that's, that is a disruptor. They're not a, obviously not a startup, they're not, um, but they are a great partner of ours and we're working with them to help them, you know, think about how can I use data for insight? How can I create a new uh, revolutionary experience that uh, makes a customer more loyal to me? Or, um, or uh, um, sorry, I saw someone over there I haven't seen in a long time. It's Ann Livermore, it's, um, like oh, back right. at, at Discover. Ann Livermore, used like, to run services. You talk about back Illuminati in the rock star, right? Yeah, I'm going to go say um, hi. She used to come to all my yeah. events. Um, Man. So final Sorry. question, we're, yeah, getting, well, cool. we're getting, we're getting yeah. the hook because Antonio's Let's here. Let's get in, you should get, get in over here right I wanna, now. I want to get your final thought on, quick sound bite, what was your summary, summary of the keynote? What's the bumper sticker of the keynote, if you had to summarize it as a bumper sticker? Wow, uh, put me on the spot there. i uh, test my messaging architect <laughs> skills. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I don't know if it'll fit on a bumper sticker, I guess in really small print, but you know, that um, H. Hewlett Packard Enterprise is, is a fresh start and uh, we're a new company. Yeah. Uh, we're focused on being a transformation partner to our customers and um, we're committed um, to helping them be the disruptor in their industry and harnessing technology in a way that creates new value through experiences and, and insights and apps, et cetera. Long bumper sticker, but. Well, um, great messaging, that's very, very relevant, too. very relevant, solution oriented, not product centric, really. Well I, you know, I could give you some, you know, inside baseball on what we did, but you know, yeah, like we'll talk, uh, I said, putting ideas into action. That was my takeaway. Yeah, putting ideas into action from the from the keynote. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was, you know, you guys nailed it. Yeah. So congratulations. Awesome. Well done. Jason Glad Newton here. here inside the cube, getting ready to Dave, wind down day one. We'll be right back with more after this short break. 